Now let's take a look at another example where an invoice has been received from a new supplier that doesn't exist in the purchase ledger yet. The invoice is still captured and registered in the APA inbox as usual, but no supplier will have been found to register and match the invoice against. You also notice that documents can also be abandoned if they're the wrong sort of document, so for example if a supplier statement had been sent through to the inbox. APA will also check for invoice number duplication, so these can also be excluded and abandoned too. On review of the registered document, the APA administrators can also create a new supplier without having to leave the review screen. By clicking on the edit button, I can now search for a supplier or create a new one by pressing the add button. Here we'll add in the supplier name and address details. In future updates to APA, you'll also be able to pop out the image viewer so we'll be able to display that on a second screen. We'll also add the ability to synchronise the document view against the selected invoices, making it really convenient to scroll through the document list and have the image refreshed automatically against the appropriate iPlicit document. Once we've set up the name and address on the supplier tab, we can also set up a series of defaults that APA will use when it's coding the transaction lines for this supplier. Defaults can be set for cost centres, departments, account codes, products, projects and locations. And these will be used in preference of any defaults that are set against the account code for example. We also set up additional aliases for this supplier if the name on the invoice doesn't match the supplier name we have in iPlicit. APA uses a range of checks on each supplier to try and match the invoice to the supplier in the purchase ledger in iPlicit, such as their name, any supplier aliases that we've entered, VAT numbers or supplier addresses for example. Now that we've entered the supplier and the defaults, we can go back to our registered document and ask APA to redo the invoice based on this new information that's been added to iPlicit. Now we'll see that the invoice lines have been coded. Adjustments can still be made where appropriate, for example if we wanted to change a cost centre or a department or any of the analysis dimensions. And on the edit button I can amend the department or any of the analysis lines on the lines that have been created by APA. You can also use a product defaults against the supplier to have their own selections defaulted rather than use those on the rules on the nominal account code. There are other things APA can check for on a transaction line if available on the invoice. Things like tax rates, bands and values where it's possible if they're noted on the invoice. A lot of this flexibility is going to be determined by the information and the layout of the invoice itself. And then once we're happy with the coding of this document and the transaction lines, we can convert this registered document into an invoice and submit the invoice for approval and through the authorization workflows as before. And for completeness, let's cover off a few other areas APA has introduced to iPlicit. Firstly, there's the APA mailbox. These are simple to create and each mailbox will have its own unique email address. That's going to be used by the suppliers or the AP teams to send their invoices to. Against each mailbox, you can have a default company. So if I wanted each of my legal entities to have their own unique mailbox, they can do so. Or I can have one mailbox that's used across all of my legal entities. Mailboxes can also contain the OCR model that we've used. And we can also add default document types for APA to convert the registered documents into. Defaults for invoices, purchase order invoices, credit notes, etc. APA has also introduced two additional tabs for registered documents that we haven't seen before. First, there's a the raw tab. This shows all of the data that the OCR service has extracted from the invoice. This screen also shows the document field and the value along with an assigned confidence level the AI has determined. This is the data that's going to be used for mapping of the invoice. If we look at the Mappings tab, we can now see how APA has used that raw data from the invoice and, if it's used that data, what data it's mapped and which fields in iPlicit it's mapped that data to. We can see the results, the scan value, the processing rule APA has applied and its own confidence level. There we have it. All available in an iPlicit environment now for our early adopters and you if you want to have a play. Thanks for watching everyone. Now back to Ian to answer all your APA questions.